Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, picking up from where we left off, um, I almost got uh, Giselle, Brett, to be guilty, but then they're like, oh, there's no way we could test for poison or whatever, or like things were clean. But then um, Susato showed up, and hopefully, whatever she brought will turn this trial around. So let's go. Loading. 22nd November, 1.14 p.m. Supreme Court of Jutkaja, blah, 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 blah. Courtroom 2. I love this theme. Well, I understand you are the judicial assistant to the defense, but why is the sudden ingress into my courtroom? Ha! A judicial assistant and a woman, no less. The rule states that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify. That's sexist. Yes, I fully understand. I only ask I ask only for five minutes of time. I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense. Ha! You're too late, little girl. This trial has already been concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moment more. But your excellency. Hold on a minute. Sorry, back. Oh, my hair. Okay, I am most grateful. <gasps> now it's the three of us on the stand. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Please, simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something. Written in English. At Giselle Brett's research. The Englishwoman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical fac faculty and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So, does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with the case? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh, no, of course not. Special characteristics of Curar? Curare? Curare? And its effects on human subjects. Interesting. Curare? I'm just gonna call it Curare. What's that? I've never heard of that word before. Time's up. The prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. It's a wonder that you managed to procreate, dude. There was too little time for me to read it in detail. But I've summarized what I could on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. This is wonderful, thank you. Giselle's report has been entered into the blah blah blah. A report detailing an unknown poison that Miss Brett has been researching during her time at Yume University. But why would she have to research poison? Goodbye then, and good luck. We have had long enough counsel, we cannot detain our English guest any longer. I ask the prosecution and the defense now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present to the court? I presume not, but... The prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, your excellency. Yunosuke, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yes, I know. Your excellency, the defense does have new evidence. Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, Your Excellency? If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer? It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid... It's not so very long until tea time. I'll have to politely decline. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realize it was phrased as a question, however... I must ask that you treat that as an order. Oh, snap, judge! I've said it many times before, but... The Japanese language makes no sense. Then why are you studying abroad in Japan? <laughs> My apologies, dear lady. 
So, cancel. What is this new evidence that demands the court's attention? Why, it could only be this thing, but I want to investigate it. A poison made from the bark of certain trees and jungles of South America, the hunters of the region have used it since ancient times to incapacitate their prey. Effects. Instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minute doses. Route of entry. The above-mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound, such as that inflicted by a blowpipe blow dart. Due to its ability to render the human body paralytic, it's believed that the toxin could have application as an anesthetic. However, a solution for the respiratory arrest caused as a result of the full body paralysis must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation. Okay, so it causes suffocation. So that's how it could enter the <clears throat> body. Mm. Wait, but it has to be through a wound. Oh, he just had his tooth removed, and if he drank water, then yeah. <laughs> Present. Hi. Mr. Zalebrett, we understand you are studying under Dr. Wilson at Yume University, doing research. Research, by sheer coincidence, perhaps, into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this council? A toxin known as curare, your excellency. Even the, slightly, even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. What? What complete and utter nonsense? C curare, you say? I've never even heard of it. You wouldn't have done. What do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have heard of Curare before for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country. It doesn't exist? Correct. Which means... No matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they never identify Curare. Why? Because there is no test available here that can identif identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. What? Order, order, order! Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by the visiting research student from England... Oops, it's Kazuma. Kirer has long been used by the tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that it's reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To, to lace their arrows? The report states that it is produced from the ex extract of a tree that grows deep in the Amazonian jungle, and it was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with curare suffer instant death. <laughs> they both stopped at the same time. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brett? Trumpery! These aspersions are utter trumpery! To start with, if the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain that other designers surely noticed. Hmm, that's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that, either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? Because it's an anesthetic. The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence that Curare was used. Explain yourself, Counsel. The moment this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they were in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible! Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. But with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. Hey, RC, how you doing? Long time to see. Hope you've been well, dude. Oh my gosh, he is literally you. <laughs> yeah, because he's got the flowing red headband. How you been, dude? It's good to see you. Wait, 
but after a short time, the paralysis is so severe it causes the muscles that control respiration to fail. Respiration? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. Suffocation! No breathing! And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. That's hideous! I've been putting off near replicant for the past month. Why? Oh, I just finished it. I um I got ending E on Saturday. It was so good. 14 beckons to be finished. Oh, did you finish um Shadow Why do Shadowbringers? Or what part are you up to? Oh man, you're only on the Realm Reborn, so you still got to do Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, and Shadow. Ooh. You have a lot to do, Artsy. It is long. <laughs> to the observer, it would look almost as like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly curare poison. It's a struggle to get through the after quests. Why did they give us after quests? To tie it to tie people over until like the next big patch came out. I know the after quests are so dumb. And your suggestion that this bottle, Council, actually contains this terrifying poison? This 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 is all very convenient, isn't it? A hitherto unknown poison for which there is no means of testing? What a happy tale for the defense. Ahem, if I may. All these facts! You think you're so clever, but you must be taught some math! It is you who must be taught. Uh, of course. I'm close to dropping this close, but I'm so close to Heaven's Ward. Dude, you gotta keep going. I like Heaven's Ward, I like Shadowbringers. Stormblood was... And Realm Reborn is just like... Yeah, whatever, it's the start. Dear lady! So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another's honest work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. I'm appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime? That really is a loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Enough of this! I, for one, refuse to accept it! That's not your job, though. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the Great Empire of Japan is... is... is breaking the rules! No, it's not. The world was big, dude. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, excuse me, Your Excellency. Yes, Miss Brett? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Bottle? Um, well, yes, I don't see, um, why not? Stormblood definitely doesn't seem impressive. Yeah, it was real boring. I skipped all the cutscenes. Heaven's Word and Shadowbringers are what I look forward to the most. Shadowbringers, I really enjoyed. It was so fun. But I'm getting back to Near Replicant. I hit ending B, now I feel bad for the shades. I know, right? Isn't it great? Isn't it fantastic now that you understand the language of the shades? <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Do get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry. To an Englishwoman such as myself, this whole affair is a farcial comedy. Your little police games are these foolish court romantics. It's laughable, really. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers! She's gonna drink it and nothing's gonna happen and everyone's gonna be like, Whoa, the bottle wasn't poison and it will be like, No, it was the cup. Wait, wh what are you doing? We're gonna say, bring the cup. Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for the shabby affair. It was in the cup. It was in the cup. That's why she only took one cup. Can we get to that point, please? 
Why do you smile at their pain? We're the villains. I know. Isn't that messed up? Because in every single other game we've ever played, we were the heroes. We were saving the world. But in Nier, we're the jerks who doom humanity. Isn't it great? I love it. Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. So, no career. The bottle was clean, is what you're saying? <laughs> you look quite incredulous, little boy, but of course. That's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. <sighs> Thank you, waiter. Now then, your excellency. Ah, um, yes, Miss Brett. I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time for the furtherance of friendship between our countries. Uh, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified with all the assistance you have given. It's in the cup. It's in the cup. This doesn't make sense. There had to have been poison in that bottle. So how... How did she... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? I don't understand it. Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little Far Eastern charade... will make for interesting conversations at the next party I attend in London. There... there has to have been poison in that bottle. Doesn't there? That smile kills me, hee <laughs> hee Objection! Hey Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! But there can't have been, because otherwise she would have killed over dead. Come on, Yunosuke. We have all the clues now. That bottle of water... Contains no poison. As I thought, there is no poison in that bottle. What? Why, Yunosuke? Isn't it obvious? If there was poison in there, she'd be dead by now. Sometimes your unadulterated naivete really astounds me. But sometimes it's in need of a good staining. Until it's as dark as your uniform in the ways of the world. What? What does that mean? Oh, is that what this color's supposed to represent? <laughs> that was a guileless ending to a promising line of inquiry console. For oh! Wait, so there what? What? This whole trial is poisoned. There... So there was poison in a bottle? Come on, well... Contains poison. The culprit did put cure air poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. I... The defense refuses to change its position. You're serious? How's the week been? The week has been good. Um, a little bit tiring, tiny bit stressful, but it's been good overall. I hope your week was going good. I was new near was crazy about killing Chase, but dude, I didn't want to believe it. Believe it. Fool, are you blind? There's no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw. Miss Brett drinking the water from it? That's right. Which rather complicates your arguments, I think. And I believe that complication can be explained. How, how exactly? I need to think through all these things, all the things that don't quite add up here, one by one. I'm sure the answer is in the evidence we have in a court record somewhere. It has to be. Well, then the poison isn't in the bottle, it's in the cup. Very well, if the defense truly intends to assert this claim, then I must ask you to support the assertion with evidence. What explains how the witness was able to consume the supposedly poisoned water unscathed? Uh, gotta save, just in case I stupidly lose another life again. Uh, when even the prologue has you guessing, it gives you high hopes on the rest of the game. <laughs> hey, my kids, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! It's gotta be the cup. Hi. Nope! The music's still going! It is wrong. I mean, I have played Shadows of the Colossus before we play as the hero trying to save his love by killing Colossi. Yeah, that game was also so good. Uh -huh. Seems the defense, or should I say, the wretched accused... ...is the only real source of complication in this case. You'll have to think harder than that, defendant. 
It's the cup! Sorry, Your Excellency, I'll try to find some better supporting evidence. You're making this complication more complicated than it needs to be. Alright, I'll do my best to find an answer that fits the facts. After the defense, the wretched accused, blah blah blah, tends to assert his claim. Support How the witness was able to consume this supposedly water unscathed. Oh, she doesn't have a wound! Nope, that's also wrong. Damn it. Okay, well, I'm loading. I'm loading. <laughs> I don't want to lose two lives. You're too focused on the cup, it's obviously the swan. <laughs> he was shot and consumed this poison, supposedly poison water unscathed. Handbag on a chair. Is, is there something in here? Instant paralysis of the entire body above when the poison enters body through a wound. Do I just have to show this again and just be like, she doesn't have a wound? No. Wait, is it? The answer to this riddle is right here in Miss Brett's own research report. That's not a valid explanation. No? After all. We don't speak English. That report is utter gibberish. This impudent young scoundrel is trying to ridicule the court, Your Excellency. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone, honest. I'm just reading Susato-san's notes. I concur. This report is too extensive to be considered in its entirety by the court. You will direct us to the pertinent section, Council. Which section of the report reveals the alleged answer to this riddle? Oh... I think it was special characteristics. The second page. We've been hearing a lot about this curare poison. I just realized you have bangs now. Yes, I do! I got bangs again. It's been a lot. Long time. That's a post time skip appearance if I've ever seen one. <laughs> and it's Luffy curious about something. Oh, Council? Well, it sounds as though indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years to lace the heads of the arrows that they shoot at whatever prey they're hunting. So we've been led to believe, yes. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please. But if they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, Council. No, that would be madness. Madness? This is Sparta! But I actually found the answer to that conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? I see. That makes sense. Yes. The mention of that particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written like this. When Kirara enters the body through an open wound, it has terrifying poisonous effects. However, when it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brett, you authored this research. You knew Kirara's special characteristics. And you knew that you could make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Oh! Rapscallion! <laughs> the swan's alive! Well, I do not get it turns out... You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? A lawyer? Oh, all this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I fail to see how it possibly... So, the ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with, some facts he read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? 
flaw? As even your brain has managed to deduce, Curare is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric succus. Oh, yes, well, of course. Gastric suckers? What are they? So, if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk... The professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? But he would, because he got a tooth pulled! Uh, that's right. Good gracious. That's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, no? I'm telling you, it's the swan. Brett is just a host. <laughs> the swan is parasitic. Order in the court. Order! The logic holds. If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are... are you trying to suggest... Yes. This career poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. And that's how I met your mother? Why is, why is this... What is this falling up inside me? I've never felt like this before. It's a sort of conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. Oh! My first objection! I don't think so, Miss Giselle Brett. How, how dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there is no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. Show your face, Giselle! Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, you must provide compelling evidence. As we now know, this poison is completely harmless when ingested. Why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the curator? Cause he got a teeth pulled. I don't know what's going on, but I'm in for it. Um, I've been framed for a murder. But it's this lady who killed him. And her swan is, is crazy. Flash check. As Miss Brett so readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? <gasps> The toxic effects of curare are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So, for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But... What if there was a wound inside of the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water? Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have... If you just had been to the dentist and had a tooth extracted, for example. Ah! Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah! So that's it. You used that knowledge to orchestrate this. Show your face. Show your face. <laughs> Is she... Laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are also pure. What? What do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No! I mean, it could just slip. Oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. N no! What is it? What just happened? It's the Englishwoman. She just smashed that bottle. And at the Supreme Court. What a total blunder. Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect as much of the water from that broken bottle as possible, at once! You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. 
You have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. <laughs> I will slap your face. How could you? You... You won't get away with this. You can thump the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle or not. You... And let us not for forget. Ooh, let us not forget. We still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, Council of the Prosecution? Oh, of course, of course. You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right. And really, looking at this photograph, it's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So, of course, the only person who could have shot him in front of the front is the little schoolboy. No, you killed the victim that day, using Curare. And then, in order to frame Yudosuke Naruhoto for the crime, you waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor. Before you shot the professor's, uh, dead body in the chest with your own hidden gun. Do the oh ho ho ho! <laughs> Do the oh ho 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 ho! Then, in the confusion that followed, all you had to do was turn the dead professor and his chair around. You see? You had every opportunity to commit this crime. <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have, young man. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly. And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. <sighs> hmm. This is unbelievable. How can this be happening? We had her, but now... Is she really going to get away with it? Get the cup. Get the cup. The way she destroyed that evidence was obscene. Ryunosuke. Yes? We've come this far, but now... Now you're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So if there are any clues left for us to use now, they must be in your head. In my head? You told me before that your powers of observation were the one thing you could really depend upon. Well, yes, that's true, but... But I didn't manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. <laughs> so think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. What I saw, what I felt. Hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! Every color. Is Kazuma right? Somewhere in the vibrant memory of the same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? There's a clue! It's blood! Actually, Kazuma, I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Haha, <laughs> you always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryunosuke? Did you say happy birthday? Happy Thursday. <laughs> Come on then, let's wipe the smug smile off that English woman's face with some evidence. Alright, can't wait. It's been niggling me for a while that something feels amiss in my memories of that day. Whatever it is could be the key to arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere. The clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's real killer must have been is... The blood! Hello? Cadet! Inspector Hosonaga, answer me this! Y yes? What is it? Uh, he's still miles away, probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you've said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely! I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took to the victim's table that day. Wait a minute. 
Where are you going with Where are you going with this little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the seed shown in this photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate that the steak was served on. It was a spattering of blood. What? Oh really? And what of it? Obviously that must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Take a good look at the photograph. Look at this photograph! Every time I did, makes me laugh. And the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, there's no way the blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. Ah! Hmm, yes. For blood to have made it onto the plate, it implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter. Which means the shooter must have been sitting opposite the professor, as you were. Giselle Brett. I beg your pardon? This, this is beyond ridiculous, fabricated nonsense! Is this course seriously expected to believe something the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? You know told you to shut your mouth! This... This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Inspector? You mean... Yes, I took the plate. In the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it, meat and all, and I don't care if they called me a crime scene thief because of it. You did what? I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. Sergeant? And I did it all in the name of justice. <laughs> then we can find out for sure whether or not there's a bloodstain on Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Oh, because the sergeant that day was also eating steak, so he just took everything. Her saying shut up is hilarious. It is. Inspector. The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir! Sorry for the delay. Here is what you ordered. The steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't! Quickly, Inspector, the blood ban! Show the court! Of course. Examine the plate at your leisure. No. No blood. No blood anywhere. But... but no. That's... IMPOSSIBLE! I know I saw it. I'm sure of it. It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. <laughs> what an unbecoming expression, little boy. Oh! The swan opened his wings. Wait, why is he bleeding? I don't know. The inspector just coughs up blood. We don't know why. You see, this is why I always say you can't trust what Japanese tell you. Then why are you studying abroad in Japan? Ah! I couldn't agree more in the case of this disgrace to the Empire. He's your own fellow countryman. Why are you looking down on him so much? Damn. I believe we may have finally reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at a courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. Ha! This sorry looking stick reveals the facts all too clearly. The sorry looking accused wishes to examine it again. Be my guest. The plate of steak has been entered into the court record. Was the plate I saw, or thought I saw, just a figment of my imagination? Yep. Uh, examine. I can't find anything out of place. This is the wrong plate! Huh? What 
the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Koban coin, and the hallmark is from the Hallway era, I believe. No, no, I don't mean what is it. I mean, what's it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a Hallway Koban? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. Hmm, this isn't the first time today that there's been talk of a Hoei Koban. I've heard pearls of before swine, but I've never heard of bullion and bully bullion. <laughs> and I don't think you ever will again. This is extraordinary, though. This means... It's not the plate! It's not... It's not Giselle's plate. So I gotta save it, um... Until they say, oh, is there any more evidence you want to show? That's the only infuriating part of Phoenix, right? It's like, hey, I know what I have to present. You just have to wait for the right moment to present it. I like how you give this guy a squeaky voice. Because he does have a squeaky voice. This is it now. I've lost. Do you know, Ske? It's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Hmm? Never stop believing in yourself. Don't stop believing. Keep looking forward, no matter what. Believe in myself? Really? Hmm. Maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. I already did. As the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to be problematic in any way, I presume any further examination of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objection? Yes. That bloodstain was going to clinch the trial for me. Can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? There's another clue. Your Excellency, please wait. This plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth. Same level of confidence as with the cup. Yes, it's definitely definitely the cup. Why would she just take that one cup? It makes no sense. Like, the cup has to have some kind of significance. There's like three bites. The one photo has one, I think. No, there's a couple of bites in the photo one as well. Oh, no, wait. No, because they're different. They're different steaks. Yeah, you're right. The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beefsteak. Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel for the Defense, you will now clearly show the court to what you are alluding. Where precisely on this plate of beefsteak is the new clue to be found? Under the steak! Huh? What the? What in the world is this? I think. It's a Koban coin. We already read this. Yeah. Did you say it was a Hoi Koban? Yo, we've heard that word before. Yes, 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 yes. I read this all. Now, can you just show the coin to the court? This means... The coin! No! Stop it! Stop it! I certainly never expected to find a precious coin underneath the thick cut of beef. And it's from the Hawaii era, too. Uh, they're really quite valuable. Uh, well marinated in the juices as well. Look! What? Are you thinking of eating it? No, no. But the next time I order a steak in an expensive restaurant, one thing's for sure. My heart's going to be racing as I lift up the meat and peer underneath for a prize. I think you might have the wrong end of the stick about this, Rinosuke. A Koban coin underneath the steak. There's only one logical explanation. Oh, I didn't pre press the present button. Whoopsies. This judge has bigger balls than the judge from the original trilogy. Yeah, I really like this judge a lot. He looks cool, too. Good gracious, that's... Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Koban? What on earth? A whole era one at that. Miss Brett, this is in fact the beefsteak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me, why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? Shut up! Shut up! What a ridiculous question! How should I know? 
I've never seen that thing before in my life. I don't know what this is, but I want no part of it. I fail to see how this is relevant. A coin under the meat. That could simply have been careless mistake by the chef in a moment of distraction. Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe that this happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare hallway koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak? If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll rip up my ticket to the Great Britain right now. He's right. It can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Yes, Council? A rare hallway koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak? If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. Perhaps, little boy, you should realize that it is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here. The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what it's doing under that stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the Koban that was found underneath the beefsteak is... Kyorio Korekta! <laughs> Obviously, it can only be... The antique dealer and owner of Raste, Kyorio Korekta-san. Cutie? As in... Mr. Cucumber something? Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. How do you pronounce your name, you stupid girl? Oh, yes. The old man who testified earlier on alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Koban coin when it happened. At exactly the moment the gun was fired. He was on the ground. The gunshot interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Oh wait, this is a flashback. I should use funny voices. Hunting for treasure! Indeed, the whole I a Koban, my prized coin! This, then this Hoi Era Koban, do, do you mean to tell me? No, no, no. Please, why would Korakta san's Koban be sandwiched between the victim's beefsteak and his plate? It makes no sense! Which is why I'm asking to bring Korakta san back to the witness stand so we can ask him. Officer, bring both witnesses that testified earlier back in here. Oh gosh, how long is this gonna go? Without a moment's delay. It's like the answer is right in front of our faces, but we have to like keep winding around before we reach the destination. I can't believe we come back round to that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch, that if we chase down the real significance of this Koban, we'll find that it's a key element in this case. Oh, just let me get you, Giselle. What is this about? Why have I been calling up again? Don't you realize that it's dinner time for a little baby idol? When my son's belly is empty, he's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police, we were, like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a trice, a worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I to say. The sun has set on this rusty shop owner's existence. Be that as may, Korakta san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your rusty memory serves, have you ever seen this co- yeah! That's- yes! That's it! The one! The very one! The very exact one that it is! The resplendent, splendiferous hallway treasure that my rusty bones vanished to misplace that fateful day! It can't be! Hmm, as I thought. Young man, enlighten this decrepit old fool. Put me out of my misery. Where? Where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between a beefsteak and its plate soaking in the seasoned meat's juices. S sandwich? S soaking? Seriously? Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my hallway treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate? 
Who would do such a thing? Such an unconscionable thing! It might be the sergeant. He said he was eyeing the steak. Excuse me. Could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Hosonaga. I mentioned this earlier on the trial, but... I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm, wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quite quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in undercover, is it? Yes, I took on the job of waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. You've already said this before, can you get to the point? It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm, so unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already in the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hit Korakta-san's Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. I am going to save! Jelly, you must let this anime game do its anime. No shortcuts. No! Don't anime so much. Let me get to the answer. I know the answer! Who is the despicable scandal that saw Korakta- The sergeant! Obviously. It can only be you. Sergeant Yesandosa? What? How? How dare you? You, you, you monster! Monster? I stole that Koban, did I? I'm the master thief of La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet? But it wasn't me, it was Idol. Idol was the, <laughs> he's a baby. Idol was the master by behind all this. You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an innocent little baby? It's you who's a monster, Sergeant Dosa! Ugh. Rip his mustache out. Clip it clap, 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 Nippon Imperial Army, Sergeant Yesanosa, preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. His mustache is all messed up now. Do any of you know of the extraordinarily low wages in the Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place. And I've heard it's hard for lower-ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? The place is heaving with money. Every three days, I'd go there and do reconnaissance for our targets. And I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. Sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork, even, which is worryingly believable. And your target that day was this old man and his Koban? Yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I slipped a coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm, a veritable phantom thief you are. Excuse me. My phantom thieves are honorable. How dare you. I was all set to leave the stake I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Bang! Yes. Oops, that's me. Yes, when the professor was shot. 
I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. Idle, too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could. On the devil! I slipped it under the stake. Hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. So is there blood on his sleeve or something? This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time? Well, Miss Brett? Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. May the esteemed gentleman please be excused, Your Excellency? Hmm, indeed. The theft of the cobalt was clearly perpetrated by this baby-saddled sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. Nonsense, is it? Uh, um, whoa. Oof. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. It's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Very well, now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. No, you can't leave. You can't leave. And good day. This is where the babies start talking in a deep voice. I've been watching Invincible again. I've been meaning to watch that. People said it's good. Yunosuke, what's the matter with you? There's no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Wait, Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your party words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? What you student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about? Oh, I don't know what she said! He's talking about when she said, why would someone bite into the steak? He- cause he said it. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea stands me. And that's for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. It's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? Huh? Then... this is the... She didn't turn Wilson around, she pushed him back. That's the sergeant's stake. Oh! Oh! The photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred? What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed, yes. Go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just splitting hairs! Not true. Doesn't something about the steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. 
I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claims no Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at the steak. Take a look at the steak! <laughs> In particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Ah! Oh! Ah! It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all! But, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry and couldn't help her. Ooh, she brought out the handkerchief. J uh, JT, I can't believe you. This is the first trial. Wait, what can't you believe? What? I did nothing wrong. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will be all over in a blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. Just leave everything... I've heard enough. You irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Uh, of course. Dear lady! What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly the witness knows what this means. She's realized that the catastrophic implications these teeth marks and the stake have for her. Yunosuke, do you know where you're going with this? Yes. Now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in the steak that had a been that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks in the steak are a little unnatural, as you put it, Council. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to the conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been... what? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. The limit doesn't exist. The limit doesn't exist! This is absurd! The trial has run several hours already, and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward? There can't be! I don't believe you have it! I don't, but Hosonaga does! I don't, but there is someone who does have it! Someone in this very courtroom! And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I am referring to... It will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request that the defense has in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? I am pretty sure... It's Hosonaga, but just in case, I'm saving. The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosonaga. What? I have it? Yes. You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with teat marks. Yes. Now, early this afternoon, Sergeant Losa told the court the following. I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak. And as well as admitting to stealing Koretta-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the steak. You, you watch a cadet? I'm a superior officer! I'm not in the military. Sergeant Losa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the steak that you put the coin under? In fact, your own steak? 
Attention! Affirmative. Of course, I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nusa's meal. But that makes no sense. That plate was taken from the victim's table. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her stake, nor does she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched his two stakes over. This is the truth. Objection. That can't be the truth. Yes, that is true. What impossible. Yes, where's your proof? Right there. That's impossible. That was the truth. <laughs> You did switch the plates? You you did switch the plates? Well, after it happens, the um When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hit the coin underneath it. But then when the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my stake with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Uh, UNBELIEVABLE! Okay, so she did flip him around. Okay. However, fear not, Prosecutor-san. What now? I swear on the brass buttons of my of my uniform. That is all I did, sir. Well, you did. That's plenty, Sergeant. So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosonaga. Yes. Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah! Yes! Wallow in despair. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat, it can't have the slightest bearing on the case. No, you're not wriggling your way out of this- blah, blah, You're not wriggling your way out of it this time, lady. I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan proves pro promises to prove such a problem for you, no? You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see the plate was con to confirm something that the defendant remembers seeing. <laughs> Thinks he remembers. They used the last 20 minutes to say the inspector has the Miss Brett's steak plate with blood. I know, so roundabout, this dialogue. Ugh. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate was, that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and the plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir! I don't know about this game anymore. <laughs> but it's Phoenix right. I gotta do it. Sorry for keeping you. 
What do you know? Blood! Here's the other stake at its plate. Please feel free to examine it. The blood stain is clearly visible. Look! Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruhoro-san to have shot the victim. Ah! It, it can't be! In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. That's right, Miss Giselle Brett. It's you! Have your breakdown, have your breakdown, have your breakdown. Outdone. By Japanese? Me? By Japanese schoolboy? No. No. No! Is that swan not, like, pooping on your hat? Whoa! Uh, yeah! There are little chicks coming out. Ah, 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 ah. That was a black one. Ah. Now she's flying. Oh, look at the little chickies! Ah, the black one went to him. So that swan is alive? Please excuse my little outburst, I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett? I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. She's still gonna find a way to pin this on me, and I'm gonna have to do some other nonsense to prove it wasn't me. Gosh! Danganronpa has this kind of problem too, but I think the story is much more interesting in Danganronpa. Um, it was I who took the professor's life using career. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison will be found in his water. Because Kirere is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water. 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 I don't know. And it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone. And leave immediately. However... Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter. Matter. But the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor... ...meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point. So I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happened to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of curé in my handbag, and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. But I don't have pockets! Under your skirt! So I was right, there were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I'd intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up.
That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Naruhoto-san was the culprit and I apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor and his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. Oh, so I don't have to prove any- But I didn't see her face! We never saw her face! So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. You killed a man! That's more than a misdemeanor! Your Excellency. Yes? I wonder... Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhoto-san. No, I never will. How dare you? You tried to have me framed for murder. You killed a man! Can you imagine a timeline where no one has killed anyone? No. Let me off the hook and I'll... <laughs> Game Grumps! It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This... This can't be! Takasa Jiaochi doesn't lose! Not to the likes of this... this bloody student! You better start getting used to tough opposition. Arr! Judosuke Naruto! What? Yes? This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten! You've become conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. <gasps> oh! You just showed him dishonor? Ooh. A thousand millennia may pass, and still, the Aoshi clan will never measure up to the Naruhoto clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. She admitted everything way too easily, probably covering a ring for the swan. <laughs> the swan is a real mastermind! It's communicating with her somehow! Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Junosuke Naruhoto, presented an excellent case. I... thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and produce new, new procedures of justice. I can read. A new future of law awaits, but what will it look like I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazumasugi. Yes? After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can, absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. What mission? I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so brave all of a sudden? Ah, never mind. As for you, Junosuke Naruhoro, Oh, yes? In you, I sense... how can I put it? Unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency! Amazing work. Now for political reasons, I must find you guilty! <laughs> it is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find a defendant, Ryudosuke Naruhoro, Instead of confetti! That's so cute! I did it! I completed the first trial! Woo! 
This court is now adjourned. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Ninosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra-large sukiyaki from the place on Yumei University Street. Don't forget! Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Congratulations to both of you for proving Naruhoto-san's innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do any. Thank you so much! If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Brett, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, oh, yes, of course. Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Shushida Mikotoka. Judicial Justice Defense. Speaking of Mikotoba. Ah, oh, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Th thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you, after all. Your efforts exposed a true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yumei University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. Uh, he went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, so you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides... It's your turn, Asugi. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world by enslaving others, but we won't talk about that. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all that I can. Can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword of Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is the, his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go and cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, oh, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's a true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future. For Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hosnaga! It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate- But- but what's all this about consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then, who? Who's going to bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case, somewhere far away, where our voices can't be heard. But why a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the Friendship Treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments... They can't invoke the consular court just like that! Oh, can't they? 
Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret gains about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student. Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance for her. I don't believe it! She killed a man! The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case for, of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make a change. This is a time of great turmoil, this new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. <clears throat> well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor... You're right, this is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Junosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. But his man, his friend died, but... <laughs> In that case, might I suggest La Carte at all? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hosonaga-san, aren't you? <coughs> Wait, so what was her motive for killing him? I don't know. No motive. Which is why the case probably goes deeper. Because, like, yeah, she's leaving, so we gotta follow her, uh, or something. Allegedly, like the, uh, like the man, time will show that the swan was a true mastermind. <laughs> Just, judicial system will prevail. <laughs> Let's not worry about the details for now. To La Carnival! Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course! La Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paper with Renato Horasan's release. Oh, yes, thank you. Why the woman gotta do it? So Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I, I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Or so he thought. Kazuma. Yes, Yunosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again. That's all. You really saved my skin today. Ha 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 ha! I didn't do a thing! You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills make the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm. I'm not so sure about that. Hmm? To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during the trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious! If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me! All that tense verbal combat? I never want to go through that ever again! I just... I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Yudosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. <laughs> I think you need more than that! To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you chose to believe in, even then... Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm, believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stopped looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it, through your own efforts, and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. 
is Kazuma like Mia and Maya's ancestor and um, Yunosuke is Phoenix's ancestor? That makes sense. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Yunosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Hosomaka. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes. That too. Not with that epic roundabout nature. <laughs> the ability to anime! Woo! So my very first trial came to an end. Oh my- it's been an hour and a half for that last section? Holy crap. Kazuma, Professor Susato-san, who acted as my assistant. I missed the beginning of that because I, I thought the auto-scroll wouldn't go. Inspector Hosonaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. So who would Hosonaga possibly be the um, ancestor of? Um, Sky? Emma and Sky? Because of evidence? But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. And first trial done! Defense debut awarded! Yay! Save your current progress? Yes. Oh yeah, the Switch version has um accomplishments, like achievements that you can do. Like if I go to um oop. If I go to hold up. Uh special contents. Then accolades, there we go. So wait, what's this? For being awarded all other accolades. Yeah, so I was like, oh man, I kind of want to get the PlayStation version because then I get trophies because I thought the Switch wouldn't have anything, but yeah, here. You get stuff. And yeah. Having dug around to find every argument about shovels and spades? What? What does that mean? Ladders and step ladders? Oh no. Um. This is a personal witness during the first cross sign examination. Oh, that's Ace Attorney 2, okay. New idea in Iris's blackboard. Oh gosh. A switch game with achievements? Bakana! <laughs> Masaka! <laughs> yeah. Ooh, whoa! I think I kinda saw a spoiler. Oh no, don't read the accolades! Uh. It might spoil you. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, so how many are here? F five episodes. How many to Baskervilles? Uh, Adventure the Clouded Kokoro. <laughs> Runaway Room. Oh, <gasps> is this a train? No, it looks like a carriage. Oh man, if it was a train though. Ooh, Adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. We're on a ship now. Whoa, I can choose where? No. Wait, no, uh... Wait, what? Didn't I go to load game? Continue. Oh shoot, I was like, what is happening? I'm just gonna start this. I'm... I'm not gonna try to finish this tonight. Oh, My neck, my throat already hurts from all the voices. In a corner of that small dark room, Sholmes and I waited with bated breath. In time, there came from the ventilator a hiss and a soft, almost growl-like sound. Suddenly, Sholmes sprang into action, lashing furiously with his cane at a point in the darkness. You see it, Wilson, he yelled, his tense voice reverberating through the air. 
I raised my dark lantern shutter and the room slowly came into view. Jones was staring intently at one particular corner when he started whispering to me. The victim's most perplexing final words, the speckled band. I believe this is the terrible coil to which she referred, Wilson. In front of us was an enormous adder, its fangs bared as it threatened to strike. It truly was the most terrible speckled band I had ever seen. Interesting, in the English translation of um, uh, Sherlock Holmes and Watson's names, it's Herlock Sholmes and John Wilson. But in, um, in Japanese, they still say like Holmes and Watson. Hydrate, woo! So then, let us unravel this mystery. I don't want to read anymore, my throat hurts. ハンコ uh, ケルナ、ドンオープン。how how do you have x-ray lens <笑>いったい貴様は何なんだ突き勝手しやがってそうです海洋警察が到着するまで現場に手を触れずまつべきだその必要はないどうやら今から五病以内に諸君を犯人に証拠<笑> ま、まさかその中に犯人が。うん。一体君は何者なのだ。え、<笑> How is the killer inside a sealed cabinet? Or you can play 14. I really do, but I, I need to um, draw stuff today. My head's throbbing. What's going on? Something's not right here. There's trouble in the air. Is it going to be me again? Am I in the closet? Wait, I... I can't move. I'm in the closet. What the? Why am I in handcuffs? Hmm. So, you wake up now, hmm? We have to drag you out of the wardrobe. I do not believe how you cannot wake up. You are a true cold blooded man. You. Ha, ah, you found me then. Yeah, we found you, and now you pay, criminal. How long are you hiding in that tiny wardrobe, hmm? Ugh, sorry. Now you have been found, it is time to admit your crimes. Unless you want to find out how cold the ocean is, hmm? No, no, I'll tell you everything. There's only one thing I'd like to know from you. Isn't that... Oh, Susato. Why did you do it? Why did you take his life? Miss Susato? Wait, what did you just say? Take his life? Um, where... where is he? Where's Kazuma? I killed 
Kazuma? Ha! You pretend you do not know. You are a wolf in the sheep's pelt. You are the killer. Do not try to make excuses. What? Kazuma-sama's... Kazuma-sama's body was discovered not long ago. Here, in this very cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. His body? Please, do not try to tell us you are doing this terrible thing in your sleep. Kazuma's dead? But he can't be. And these handcuffs, surely you don't think I... I have to know. Why did you take Kazuma's... <gasps> Kazuma can't be dead. No! Why did you take Kazuma-sama's life? Answer me, please! No. No! Why would I kill Kazuma? Kazuma. It was just two short weeks ago. Are you sure about this? Won't we get in trouble? Ha 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 ha! Don't you find it fun being a stowaway? Besides, how else could you come to England with me to study? It was really something else when they brought your luggage in here earlier, though. The way that Russian crewman just tossed your traveling case onto the floor. I thought I was going to die. Yes, I still can't quite believe that. I really didn't think you'd be able to fit inside my trunk. <laughs> you must be even love, uh, less of a man than you look. Hey, honestly, I thought I'd be broke. I'd broken every bone in my body. Well, it's about 50 days until we dock in Great Britain. But if you confine yourself in my cabin here, I don't expect anyone will discover you. Ugh, I hope not. I get the feeling those Russians wouldn't be very forgiving of a stowaway. They're a sturdy bunch, that's for sure. What I want to know is, why do we need to keep it a secret from the young lady? From our faithful judicial assistant Mikotoba, you mean? From your close friend, more to the point. Surely we could confide in her, couldn't we? I don't believe she'd give me away. No, but if she knew what we'd done, that would make her guilty by association. It's best that only you and I know about this. Hmm, I suppose so. Anyway, it's about the time that the steward is supposed to come and clean the cabin. I know it's cramped, but you'd better get in there, I think. It won't be for long. And anyway, compared to hiding inside my traveling case, it'll be a breeze. Yes, but what if the steward decides to open the wardrobe for some reason? Then I'll be in for it. Stop worrying. I tell you what, why don't you write keep out or something on this piece of paper? What? Then I could stick it over the wardrobe door since you're inside. I don't know. Wait, so you were in that closet for two weeks? What did you... What did you eat and drink? Where did you go to the bathroom? What the heck? We've only been at sea for about 15 days. How can this have happened? We were supposed to be going on this adventure to England. Together! Genius idea. We leave you at the next port. Stay quiet until then. Don't make any more trouble for yourself. Murderer. No, I'm not a murderer. Da, you said before. You said you admit everything about your crimes. No, that's not right. I mean, yes, I did stow away on the ship, but... Murdering my best friend? No one else could have done it. Admit the truth. Um, Susato-san. Please, tell me what happened. I need to know. Very well. But there's something I would like to ask of you, too. Ugh, those eyes. She looks like she's ready to destroy me. This nightmare is getting worse by the minute. I suppose all I can do is try to find out what really happened. Um... Kazuma's death. He... he really has been killed, hasn't he? This isn't just a bad dream. And these handcuffs... they think I did it? 
They think I'm Cosmo's killer? When they found him, the cabin was locked from the inside. What do you mean? There's no access to the cabin via porthole window, and the bolt on the door can't be operated from outside. In other words, after the crime, the culprit couldn't have escaped these four walls. What? Or to put it another way, the culprit can only have been somebody inside this cabin. Or do you have some other explanation? Yeah, he was in a closet that was sealed from before the incident, so I couldn't have done it. This is impossible. How did he die then? What happened exactly? Are you still going to deny the charge, even despite the circumstances? Please, Susato-san, you have to tell me. The cause of death is still undetermined. They don't know how he died? The ship's doctor is examining the body, but of course he has no post-mortem analysis experience. I don't suppose we shall learn more until an expert has been consulted at our port next port of call. So presumably that means there are no obvious external signs of injury then. That's true, yes. About the incident. Can't anyone tell me what actually happened in here in this cabin? I don't understand it. Why would anyone want to kill Kazuma? Presumably that's something you know the answer to better than anyone. Please. Whatever you say, you were here in the cabin after all. Well, yes, I was, but... I was also locked inside a closet. He would always wake before dawn and do his training first thing in the morning. I was waiting outside his cabin, as I have every day so far on this voyage. But this morning, he did not come. I could sense that he wouldn't. Does that mean he was already dead when susuto san arrived at his cabin door, I wonder? I knocked, but there was no reply. And then I started to become worried, so I went to find a member of the crew. The crewman forced the cabin door open, and when we managed to get inside... There was Kazuma-sama, collapsed on the floor. And the white tape there now shows exactly where he was found, I suppose. I had no idea anything had happened. I... I must have been asleep in the wardrobe somehow. I wish it wasn't the case, but that's just very hard to believe. This is all very hard to believe for me too, trust me! Now I've told you everything that I know, so it's my turn to ask you a question. Yes, alright. Ugh, oh, my head feels so heavy. It's still throbbing like anything. Uh, stowaway. Oh no! Oh, I can do, um, exploring after I finish conversing. Why are you even on board this ship, Naruhoro-san? He said something before about being a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, yes. I'm afraid that's true. It's two weeks since we left Japan now, and I've been shut up at this cabin the entire time. Oh, hey, Zach! How you doing? Long time no see! I hope you've been well! I am really enjoying this so far. I really wanted to play this for the longest time, and the graphics are beautiful, and Kazuma's dead, so that's making me sad, but other than that... Uh, I'm good. I hope you've been well. I had no idea. But how could you have occupied Kazuma-sama's cabin for so long without him noticing? No, no, no. That would have been impossible, obviously. Yes, of course. Kazuma invited me. He wanted us to go to England together. He actually asked you? But why? I'm afraid I don't really know the reason myself. I don't understand. Kazuma, why do you want this? What's the real reason? Why go to such extreme lengths to smuggle me to England with you? Kazuma! It's an idea that's been on my mind ever since the end of that incredible trial. I think I told you then, didn't I? That you ought to become a lawyer yourself. Well, yes, you did say that, but I didn't think you were serious. You have a talent for it. I can assure you that of that. But I've never really thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, that's something you can decide for yourself. 
London is at the spearhead of cultural development, the center of the world in many ways. There can't be any harm in seeing such an important place with your own eyes, can there? Well, no, definitely not. But on a personal level... If you were to become a lawyer, then... Then what? Nothing. Forget it. What were you going to say? Kasuma-sama is... He was always saying the same thing. That he wanted to change the Japanese legal system. Perhaps he thought that he could do that with you. Yes, maybe. But something's still bothering me a little. The look in his eyes, then. It was darker than I've ever seen it before. Um, Susoto-san. I'm sorry that we kept it a secret from you. My stowing away on the ship, I mean. If I know Kazuma-sama, I expect he was trying to protect me, to avoid me becoming guilty by association. That's... that's exactly right, yes. Word perfect, in fact. Last night. If you're not the culprit, then tell me. What happened last night here in this cabin? Well, the thing is... I don't really remember. Kazuma brought me something to eat, just like he always did. And then I got myself into that wardrobe over there, just like I always did. Okay, so he wasn't just in the wardrobe for 15 whole days. He, like, came out, and then whenever they would come in for cleaning and whatever, he'd go back in. Makes sense. After that, I... Fell asleep? Um, well, yes. So deeply that you didn't even stir when Kazuma-sama was killed? Um, well... yes. I know it sounds unbelievable. Really, I do. But it's the truth. If only I'd woken up, then perhaps I wouldn't be in this predicament. And for some reason, my head's still throbbing like anything. Really? Hmm. Um, something wrong? Oh, um, no, it's... Please, forget it. suzuki san you have to believe me. I didn't do it. I really don't want to doubt you. But the trouble is, there's no one else who could possibly have done this. Ugh. Kazuma, I don't understand. Why? Why did this have to happen? Ugh, I can't take this. Don't try to go anywhere. You're the perpetrator of this crime. You can't leave. I can't allow that to happen. I'm sorry. But Kazuma was killed right under my nose here. And I didn't do anything to stop it. And now I'm supposed to just sit around? My hands tied while whoever did this walks free? No, I can't allow that to happen. Well, what do you propose to do then? I'm going to investigate. I'm going to find out exactly what happened here. I'm going to work out who took Kazuma's life and how and why they did it. So I'm sorry, but you're going to have to excuse me. Hiya! She flipped him. Yo, she judo flipped me. What the? That was a Susata takedown. Uh, Susata what? What martial art form is that? I'm going to need you to prove it. Sorry? Prove it? Yes, your innocence. I need evidence. But, but how am I supposed to... Have you forgotten already what you achieved just a few weeks ago? You successfully defended yourself in the court of law. Uh, I see. She's expecting me to present some conclusive evidence. I have to get Susatsu-san to believe me. I'll show her some evidence right now that proves I'm not guilty of this awful crime. Kazuma would stake this over doors of the wardrobe for me. It says keep out in Japanese, though I'm not sure the Russian crew can actually read it. Hi. Tell me, when I was discovered in the wardrobe before, was this piece of paper stuck over the doors? Oh, yes, it was. I remember clearly. I thought so. Kazuma always put it in place whenever I went to sleep in there. 
just in case the cabin steward or another crew member decides to look inside. So naturally, he did the same last night as well. Oh! Yes, of course. The gentleman who discovered you peeled that sign from the wardrobe doors before he opened them. But if I were truly the culprit, I couldn't have climbed back inside the wardrobe and stuck this on the outside of the doors on my own. Yes, that's quite true. You had an accomplice! No, I'm just kidding. In other words, it's impossible that I killed Kazuma. Well, even if you are sprawled hopelessly on the floor, I can see why Kazuma-sama thought so highly of you. Thank you, Susasu-san. Now, do you think perhaps you could help me up? Uh, yeah, a long time since the last, uh, yeah, I've been, like, inactive for a while because I was busy moving and life stuff happened, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. Why does your tutorial partner dying in the second trial sound so familiar? <gasps> You're right, Mia died in the second trial too. Oh, oh, I don't, Kazuma, no, I was so looking forward to, like, doing all the trials together with him, but he's dead. Is she dumb? She saw the guy take it off. <laughs> you have broken my legs, please help me up. <laughs> well, in light of that evidence, I don't see any reason why I should stop you from investigating in here, at least. Thank you. So you finally believe me? I'm sorry, no. What? I'm not sure yet. I can't rule out the possibility that you used some sort of conjuring trick to put the sign back in position. What does she think I am, a magician? For now, I suggest you investigate as thoroughly as possible in here. I'll do the same. Alright, let's get to work, Susatu-san. Please don't misunderstand me. I still have my doubts. Oh. I shall be watching you to make sure you do nothing that might disturb the crime scene. I wouldn't want you using your conjuring tricks to destroy evidence, for example. Right. Oh no. Well, anyway, I should make a start on investigating in here. Examine everything I can. Kazuma, I swear, I will avenge your death. Oh, n uh. Oh my gosh. I thought Susato would be like a level-headed girl. Like, she wouldn't be silly like Maya and Iris and, and all the other girl assistants. But no, she believes you can do magic and conjuring tricks. Oh gosh. Oh, Susato, no. No, I feel like she's gonna be like sillier and sillier as the game goes on and I'm not looking forward to that because it's like, why do all the assistants have to be like silly and dumb? It, uh, uh, I guess to like Japanese people it's charming, but I'm just like, it's not. Just, just give me Kazuma back, please. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it off here because I'm start my throat is really starting to like get tired from all the voices and all the reading. So yeah, next time when I stream again on Tuesday night, I will pick up from here, we'll examine everything and we'll do the second case. I don't think I'll be able to finish the second case in one round though, so we'll just have to do another two rounds again. I also want a Kazuma to be your partner, but I think he would get boring after a while. Um, I don't think Kazuma would ever get boring. Excuse me, his headband is constantly floating in the wind. That means he's always awesome. His personality was super deep. Yeah, he's good looking. <laughs> also, I feel like he had a secret that he had to tell me, but he didn't tell me. Like, what was his mission for Great Britain? But I'm sure we'll figure all that out in like the, the later um, uh, episodes. It wasn't deep. Well, that's because we barely knew him. We barely scratched the surface of him. So we didn't really know him that well. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting really tired. So I'm going to end this here. So thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.